bosses or managers? What was your worst employee like? The one that had to be repeatedly sent home to shower and change. My girlfriend's sister, who I live with as well, don't ever do this, but whatever, got their brother a job last month, working where she works and she, sister, not my GF, is his boss now. He moved in with us for just under two weeks because he had to find his own place after moving for the job and she was giving him lifts to work. He failed to shower almost daily and it turns out he was just using water and not the shower gel bought for him, never used deodorant or antiperspirant. And about four or five times she was late because she had to iron a shirt for him as he had just picked up the shirt he wore the day before, all scrunched up and wrinkled, etc. I was staying in the spare room, more a study than anything with a day bed in it from Ikea, and it just freaking stanked after a few days. We told him daily to open the window. It reeked. Like that wet clothes and unwashed sweaty sheet stink. It was agreed he would only be there a week. But that turned into two because he didn't bother to set up room viewings around town. We had to find one for him. At that point, I was helping just to get him the hell out. His clothes were all over the floor. He never folded them. Nothing. Just let them fall where they fell and had his suitcases open and covered in bundles of clothes. He didn't even hang his towel every day. Just left it in a damn pile on the floor. He's 22. It baffles me how freaking unaware someone can be about how to live when you have a proper office job. Christ, I feel like I can't go to work if my shoes smell. What the heck? I feel filthy and cloudy-minded if I don't shower before getting out of my home every day. Story 2. The company I work for is pretty hard to get into, even if you have an impressive resume or an awesome reference. Unfortunately, you had a new client. In one quarter, his business would keep our lights on for about 10 years. He asked if his cousin or little nephew could have an entry-level position at our company, and we reluctantly said yes. The kid surfed the web all day looking at cars to buy. Whenever we'd ask him if he completed a task, he'd either lie to us and say he did, or say he didn't know how to do it and didn't want to bother any of us for help. Then, he brought in all of his gaming systems into the conference room, saying that clients could play them while they waited, which could have been nice, but he played games in the conference room all day. So we came to a point where we gave him the least amount of work to do, ordering paper, delivering a lunch, etc. Two years later, the client comes to us and says that he's going to have his nephew handle the work he was giving us for him or helping him start his own consulting firm. Apparently, the kid lied like no other, making his uncle believe that he was helping run our company. Three months later, he came back to us for our business. Nephew tried hiring a consulting firm to the side to do his work so he could play Sonic the Hedgehog all day. Story 3 When I was stationed at Fort Hood, a handful of guys from my unit, including me, were chosen to be lifeguards for the public pools on Fort Hood and for the area of Lake Belton's Beach that Fort Hood was in charge of. For the first half of the summer, I worked the afternoon shift. I showed up with everyone else on my shift and walked over to one of the stands to relieve that guy. While walking over, I scanned the water just to be sure. I saw a kid who was struggling, but he had an adult next to him, so I wasn't too concerned. I walked out to the water and stood there for a second, scanning the water but paying attention to that kid. Then that adult starts screaming, He's drowning! And I go out, got the kid in the red floaty thing, can't remember what it's called, it's been a couple of years, and bring him back to shore. He was fine, just pressed his luck trying to test his swimming skills. The adult was actually a teenage brother who also was a weak swimmer. The point of saying all that is that when I looked up expecting the other soldier or lifeguard to be off his stand and next to us, he was passed the heck out. He was leaning so far to the right I'm surprised he didn't fall the heck out of the chair. I was a corporal or CPL at the time and that guy was a specialist or SPC. Same pay grade, different rank. As a CPL, I had authority over him, and boy did I freaking use that authority that day. I became his personal trainer for a few hours, and he was supposed to be off work around 1.30 to 2 p.m., but I made him stay on shift until 7.30 p.m. because of that. It was sweeter for me because it was a Friday, and I knew he had plans that night. Not anymore, poophead. Story 4. We were hospital aides on an inpatient floor. So we changed incontinent patients, did vitals, helped patients walk to and from the bathroom or chairs, that kind of stuff. Nurses depended on us to do our job so that they could do theirs. This girl would avoid doing any work she could. She'd constantly hide in one of the back nursing stations and hunker down where she couldn't be seen in red. She'd ignore call bells for select patients who were known to be incontinent and messy. Just sit and read while the bell goes off and wait for one of the others to grab it. She was allotted a 30-minute break and constantly took up to an hour. When she was training a new girl, she encouraged the same work avoidance behavior. Then she got busted for falsifying vitals. She was upset that she couldn't take a break on her schedule, so when she did go, she was gone for an hour and a half. She came back after the second round of vitals for her shift was due, so instead of getting her bum in gear, she made them up. Manually typed BS into the computer instead of taking vitals in the machine and saving them. They went to a Wi-Fi cloud to the chart. What ended up happening was she put an average blood pressure measurement, I think 130 over 85, on a patient whose normal parameters were about 90 over 60. 
So the nurse sees this, notices the patient's blood pressure is 40 points higher than it should be, so she gives him a dose of BP meds. His BP tanks, the patient nearly passed away. It's a disaster. She gets busted because her heart monitor tech suspected what had happened, gathered all the vitals machines, and printed out copies of every set of vitals that had been taken that evening. Even if you don't save it to the cloud under a patient's name, the machine saves it. None of the numbers match the ones the girl put in the computer, which proved she hadn't done her job. Who knows how long she'd been doing that without getting caught. We'd get busy and lose track of her all the time. Because of that tech, the nurse wasn't in trouble and that aide got fired. Good riddance. She wasn't prosecuted. I strongly believe she should have. The bosses thought it was embarrassing and figured firing her was enough. The day she was fired, we had a pre-scheduled employee meeting, an hour before the evening shift started. She was late to that and was floated to another unit, so flounced off before the bosses could say, wait, wait. So she takes her purse to another unit, gets called back, gets shown the evidence, and she confesses and is fired. Has to walk back to the other unit to get her purse. Has to walk to our unit to get her code and empty her locker. Had to wait for security to take her ID. The entire time, she's sobbing. She wore a lot of makeup and looked like a disaster. It ended up being very public and embarrassing for her. The entire small hospital knew. She still deserved to be charged, but damn, I hoped she'd learned something. Story 5. Had a ranch hand I caught for animal cruelty. I get a high school kid to work at my place every so often for those needed graduation community service hours. He needed like a whole day worth of hours for graduation and it was a week before. His mom dropped him off in the morning. Luckily, I had enough crap to do that I could keep him busy for 10 hours on a Saturday. Got there at 6 a.m. Obviously, he didn't want to be there. Got him to help me catch mails, meaning he just held them down while I did the stuff you need a skilled hand for. I gave him the task of sorting ewes while I go fix a gate on the other side of the barn. Simple enough. Red chalk in the back goes out in the big pasture. Yellow chalk goes in the little pasture with one ram. Blue chalk goes in the pen with another ram. Simple enough. Just catch and sort. I had one ewe I called Felicia because she was a witch. She'd run from you and all you could say is, bye Felicia. And once you caught her, she'd fight you tooth and claw to get away. I don't know why she was this way, she just was. Anyway, I guess he had trouble getting her to move, and so he reared back and punched the sheep across the nose. Which, trust me, takes a lot. I've seen one run face first, full speed into a wooden barn and not lose any teeth, and he knocked one out in one punch. I was pissed. Pulled him inside, called his mom, sent him home, refused to sign off on his hours because I had spent time to make sure she didn't get hurt worse than we thought. I should note Felicia passed a year later, but just of old age. But she did eventually calm down and that one missing tooth didn't get in her way too much. I feel like this is why a lot of people don't want others around their animals. Speaking of animals, have I ever introduced you to my pets? This one here is called Subscribe, but I call him Sub. He's a mixed breed Saharan bun. This one here is like Bataan. I call him like. He's a purebred Antarctican bun. Do you want to pet them? <laughs> Go ahead, pet them. Pet them right now. Please? Story 6. The worst employee you can have is one that doesn't do anything egregious enough to fire, but manages to make every single workday that much more aggravating. The worst guy had an attention span of a gnat. You had to write down instructions for everything, even tasks he'd done a million times before, and check in on him every 15 minutes or so. And yet, given these parameters, he'd complete perfect work. Every year during performance reviews, we'd argue about whether or not to keep him on. And every year, we'd keep him on because the devil you know. I mean, at least we knew how to manage him, and he was manageable. Story 7. Lazy, incompetent, can handle any criticism, and she stole my food. She was very overweight, and anything I ate, she would stare down and be like, Oh my god, that looks so good. I was the manager of a very small business, just me and two girls under me, so we spent a lot of time together. She would talk about how she couldn't buy groceries or keep her utilities on, but she wanted to have another baby. And she was cheating on her husband. I hated her so much, it gave me anxiety. She messed up my business, too, because of her mistakes, and our clients hated her. I eventually told my boss it was her or me. Boss didn't like confrontation, so I said okay and took a job elsewhere. The girl ended up getting fired, but it was too late. I wasn't going to stick around after that. Oh, and several times she took antipsychotic meds during the day. I think they were meant to be taken at night. And PTFO. She slept through the phone ringing and me yelling her name because I needed help. Ugh, I get mad just thinking about it. And if you read this, Haley, you're a garbage person. Story 8. I work as an English teacher in Japan teaching at elementary schools. It's really simple basic English, and the job really just involves playing games with the kids using English. It's also my job to train new staff. A new guy comes over to my place, and I go through four weeks of lesson plans in great detail and tell him just to follow them to the letter, and he'll be fine. Once he finds his feet, he'll be able to make his own lesson plans. 
Next week, I get an email from my boss saying all his schools complained about his lessons, saying they were too difficult for the students, and he was arguing with the homeroom teachers. So I arranged to meet him again to follow up. I asked him what happened. He said he forgot what I had told him to do and hadn't taken enough notes. When I asked him why he didn't call me, he said, Oh yeah, maybe I should have done that. He also seems to think that it's the fault of the Japanese education system if they think his lessons are too difficult. Skip forward three months and this has been a pattern. I'm interviewing for his replacement this weekend. Story 9. Was a manager at a fast food place for a while. You'd think my worst would have been some teenager that slacked off or didn't listen. Mind you, I'm only 24. I was 19 to 21 as manager. This new employee did not like that I, a child as she put it, was above her. She would constantly undermine my authority. And I wasn't a micromanager or even got loud. My way was, hey, do you want to check on the lobby? Not demanding, but asking nicely. That's how I was trained by my manager. I would get, no, I don't, instead of, ah, but sure. So I started saying, spotted a few dirty tables, could you take care of it? Eventually, I appealed to the owners that she should have a talk with us privately about her attitude and unwillingness to accept me as her manager. In the talk, she made it very clear that she would not ever accept a teenager, keyword, as her superior. I was 20, but I do look younger. When we explained I was well out of high school, her attitude flipped. Suddenly, she was like, oh, so you're an adult. That's okay, then. We still let her go for a blatant disregard of authority. That, and she was a lazy worker anyway. Story 10. You really can't fire someone for being slow. Like, I guess you can, but you can't. I manage a restaurant. There are certain people who are just slow, and no amount of practice is going to change that. They just move at a pace that isn't conductive to working a cook line. You can do all the coaching in the world, and it won't matter. There's this one guy we'll call Jordan. Jordan moves at the speed of mud. His mouth is always slacked open, and he speaks in such a monosyllabic fashion that you'd wonder if it was put on. We have Texas toast where I work. The procedure of dropping Texas toast is as follows. Pick up a piece of bread, brush garlic butter across the piece of bread, drop on a flat top for 45 seconds. Flip for an additional 45 seconds. Serve the end. Simple. They can drop an entire loaf of Texas toast in under 20 seconds, followed by the 2 to 45 second cook times. This is a simple procedure. Jordan stands there with his loose jaw flapping in the wind, meticulously placing garlic butter on every square inch of each piece of bread, resulting in one freaking piece of toast being completely toasted by the time the next piece hits the flat top. I've gone over to him and demonstrated time and again. Jordan, it's a quick process. Brush, drop, brush, drop, brush, drop, brush, drop, hit timer. Wait, flip. <laughs> hit timer again. Serve. He nods his head affirmatively, then proceeds to butter every square inch of the bread again. He walks one foot per minute to the fridge to grab cheese sticks to drop in the fryer. He spends five solid minutes putting chicken on a plate. He is horrible. Half the time, I just tell him to go do dishes. But I can't really fire him because technically, he's not doing anything wrong exactly. He's just doing a poor version of the correct thing. Poor performance should be enough of a reason. He's doing it right, but not for the needs of the restaurant. Story 11. Back in grad school, I ended up being the senior grad student largely because my prof was an incompetent idiot, and all the other senior grad students quit. I was basically the lab manager in addition to handling my own research. Eventually, the prof hired a new grad student. If I recall, his name was Matt. Matt was one of those people whose default expression was slack-jawed, gormless imbecility. When you talked to him, gave advice or instruction, he'd just stare at you with this vacant expression and then just turn away, never acknowledging a thing you said. That was a rolling disaster from pretty much day one. He constantly destroyed equipment, e.g. he destroyed several hundred dollars of non-magnetic steel tweezers for temp sample work by taking them all out of their custom carrying cases and just tossing them point down in a glass beaker, destroying their tips. When called out on doing this, he just shrugged and wordlessly stared at me. Oh, he also would bring in his crappy evangelical Christian rock music and play it on the lab stereo until I and the other students just got rid of the stereo to not have to listen to the crap. And crappy, not just because it was evangelical Christian music. It's not my thing at all, but I'll grant that some of those bands can at least play well. This crap was just awful. I'm pretty sure the guy was a young earther. The final straw was one morning when I opened the lab up and walked in, and nearly ran into an unsecured gas cylinder sitting in the middle of the lab aisleway. To the uninitiated, gas cylinders must be secured when the heavy metal transport cap has been removed. The gas outlet at the top is fairly delicate, and if the cylinder falls over and that valve hits something, it will probably get torn off. This turns a heavy metal gas cylinder into an uncontrolled rocket capable of punching through six-inch concrete walls and turning people into red smears. It's serious stuff. You do not remove the heavy metal transport cap until the cylinder is firmly attached to a sturdy wall clamp or other safety device. This gas cylinder was just sitting in the middle of a walkway with a gas regulator on it and a clear plastic tube trailing over to a bench. 
a perfect setup for a cylinder getting knocked over and causing a disaster. To add insult to this, the freaking thing was literally a foot away from a cylinder tie-down I had mounted to one of the lab benches. After my heart started again, I carefully walked up to the cylinder, grabbed it in a bear hug, and slowly walked it over to the clamp and secured it. Once I'd saved the cylinder, I examined it to try and figure out what was going on. That's when I saw what gas was in it. Hydrogen. The unsecured gas cylinder was full of hydrogen. If it had fallen over and hit the regulator and any of the benches all around it, it would have turned into a rocket that would have started punching holes through walls all through a busy building with over 50 scientists working in it and leaving behind a trail of hundreds of cubic feet of explosive hydrogen gas. Any flame or spark would have then detonated the hydrogen gas like a fuel air explosive bomb. This thing could easily have eliminated most of the people in the building. At this point, I'm on the warpath. I'm seeing red. I stormed over to the neighboring building where some of the other grad students were at and demanded to know who had done such a mind-bogglingly stupid thing. They were all pretty appalled and told me it wasn't them. But one mentioned that good old Matt had been talking about needing hydrogen gas for some nanoparticle reduction experiments. Now keep in mind that this sort of experiment needs maybe a few cubic feet of hydrogen gas, a tiny fraction of the volume with a full-sized bomb cylinder that had been in the lab. It could have just ordered a tiny bench-top-sized lecture bottle that is far safer and had more than enough gas. At that point, I saw red. I spent the next hour or so scouring the three buildings of my department, looking for Matt, ready to rough him up in the minute I laid eyes on him. I'm pretty sure the other grad students warned him to make himself scarce. After I couldn't find him, I went to the prof and basically told him that it was either me or Matt. Matt left a week or so later, and I never saw him again. Matt, if you ever read this, you're a stupid, irresponsible sack of crap that nearly ended an entire building full of people, and if I ever see you again, I'll punch your slack-jawed proto-humanoid face. I am so furious reading this. Oh my god. I was ready to get up and find Matt myself. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy hiring managers. What is your, what is wrong with this person moment? Story two is definitely so, so wrong. See you in that video.